If you have employment income and self-employment income, when you go to fill out the IRS Form W-4, it can get a little confusing. And I wanna go through the IRS Form W-4 to show you what to put in, but more than just that, I want you to understand how the taxes are calculated and paid, not only so you can control them, but so you can lower them. You're gonna figure out what you need to do to actually reduce your taxes and make the most of both types of your income. So let me first start out why this gets confusing. It even gets confusing for me when I'm going through this when it comes to self-employment income. And here's the reasons why. So when you go to the IRS's website and you're just thinking, hey, can I put in my self-employment income? You come to a section like this that says self-employed and it says form W-4 is primarily to be used by employees who are not subject to self-employment tax and does not compute self-employment tax. Well, that's kind of true, but not really. It does not compute your self-employment tax, but you can use the online estimator. And that's what I use in all of the videos that I do. Very, very There's a very few times that I'm actually going through the paper version. The paper version is the output, but you wanna use the online estimator. So I actually came across another IRS document that actually says this. So if you would like to use the form W-4 to make an adjustment to your withholding to account for self-employment income that you will receive from another source, use the tax withholding estimator. Now, I wish they said this across the board so people would not get as confused, but they don't, so it is what it is. Maybe they'll make uh, future changes to the estimator and the form to help those that are self-employed and make better financial decisions. So anyways, let's go through the W-4. Now, what I'm going to do here is we're going to use a $100,000 W-2 income for the W-4, and then we're gonna use 50,000 in self-employment income. So it's gonna to have to calculate those self-employment taxes and your federal taxes. It won't do the state, but it'll do your federal and your self-employment. And let's go through all of these numbers, not, uh, not just go and enter it in, get the W-4 and submit it to your employer, and then you have to fend for yourself. You need to understand this if you wanna pay the correct amount in taxes and understand what you could do proactively to reduce them. So here is the W-4. I'm gonna just set it up for you as an example. We're gonna do married filing jointly and go to the second page. And I'm gonna put in the $100,000 of income right here as our salary. And you can see it right here. So it says $100,000 is what it's calculating from what we've already been paid year to date and what we're going to be paid so far on each paycheck. So I have $2,500 for each paycheck, $80,000 year to date. They're saying it's 100,000, that's good for me. That's all I care about. I don't care about any of the taxes right now because you're gonna see why. Uh, I just wanna know what our tax liability is gonna be and then you can go ahead and adjust it how you, how you see fit. In addition to that, there's a checkbox down here for self-employment income. So this is your net income. This is your net profit. So it is your gross, your expenses, and then the number that you're gonna enter in here. So we're gonna enter in $50,000. And we're just gonna say right now that we haven't withheld any taxes for the self-employment income. And then I'm gonna click next, and we're going to choose the standard deduction, which is $25,900 for 2022. I'm not gonna choose any tax credits right now. I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So here's what we need to look at. Anticipated tax obligation, $22,779. So if we scroll down, this is gonna help us calculate everything. So this is all of our taxable income. Now we have 140, our AGI right now is $146,468. And this is because it is reducing the deductible portion to your self-employment. So let me just let me just run through this math really quickly with you so you can kind of understand what we're dealing with here. Because why would the AGI not say 150,000? It's because of that deductible portion and it's starting with that $50,000. So the 50 I'm going to do it the long way first and I've done this on other videos recently, but $50,000 you have self-employment tax. So the way to figure this out is you're going to have to multiply it. Again, I'm doing this the long way first and then I'll show you a shortcut. We're gonna do it by 0 0.0765. And let me just break out my calculator, $50,000 and multiply that by 0 0.0765. And that's gonna be 
$3,825. Then we're gonna subtract that amount from our $50,000 again, because we have two we have two sides to our self-employment tax. So $50,000 minus $3,825 is, I'm just gonna write the, the total here, is $46,175. Now, $46,175, multiply that again by 0 0.0765, and that is multiplied by 0 0.0765, that is gonna be $3,532, okay. $3,532. So let's just go back to this really quickly and take a look at this right here. You can see it. So this is the deductible portion of your self-employment tax. So you can see that right here, $3,532. That's the number that we got. So how do we get to 46468 So what we did here was we took the $50,000 and we're going to subtract $3,532. So I'm just going to do it again. $50,000. We have it right up there on the board. $3,532 gives us our $46,468. So that is what we call our total taxable income. And this is really our plan compensation when we're going to get into the retirement plans, which I'll talk about in this video too. So $46,000. $468. That is why we get $146,468. And we see this number right here. So we see that right there. $146,468. That's how we get this math. Then if we go a little bit further, we see the standard deduction of $25,900. So if we take that $146,468 and subtract $25,900. That's gonna give us $120,568. But look at this. Why is our taxable income $111,274? So let's go back to our board here and take a look at this. $46,468. And let's multiply this by 20%. Why are we going to do that? Why are we going to multiply it by 20%? So $46,468 times 0.2 is $9,293.60. I'm going to write that up here. So $9,293.60. So we'll put that right there. And then let's go back to our math over here. So we have our 146,468. So 146,468. And then we'll subtract this amount right here. So we're going to subtract our $9,293.60. And then we're going to then subtract $25,900. And that is $111,274. And look at that, $111,274. You can see it right down there. So what, what did I just do? So this number right here is what we just added up. Here's what I just did. When you are self-employed in certain instances, and including this one, is we get a QBI, Qualified Business Income, deduction of 20% of this amount. So 20% of this amount is $9,293. That is why it reduced it even further because we had that QBI deduction. So that is how we get to the $111,274. And then you could see here, our total self-employment tax is $7,065. That is both sides of the equation. And then you could see income tax before the credits, that's $15,714. And then if we go further down, we can see that our total tax liability is $22,779. Now, I also have this other Google sheet that I put together so we can see just income taxes. And what I wanna show you is what, what the difference here, how we can figure this all out. So if we go back to the screen here, I know some of this stuff is confusing. If you have questions, just stick with it. 
or ask them in the comments down below. But I'm gonna take this number right here, $111,274. I wanna show you what the federal income taxes are minus self-employment. So 111,274. So let's bring that down. So I'm gonna add $25,900 and that's gonna be 137,174. And that's just so I can see the taxable income here, 111,274. That's the same number that we just saw here. So we come here and we're gonna pay $15,714 in federal income tax. And look at that, it's right over here. That is your income tax before the credits. Now we don't have any other credits, but what we do have is self-employment taxes. So our $15,714 plus our $7,065 is our 22,779 that's down here. So why am I showing you all this? Because I want you to see that it's you could possibly withhold this amount from your W-4. So if we scroll up and we look here and we say that if we do this, if we don't do anything, um, if we go here. So if we don't do anything, then we're obviously in this scenario, we're not gonna withhold anything. Expected tax withholdings is zero. But if we make these changes, then we're going to withhold the correct amount. So right here, if we see total tax paid this year, if you submit a new form W-4 as recommended, it will withhold the full amount. So what does this mean? Is that you don't necessarily need to pay your estimated taxes as, as you're self-employed as long as you make sure that you're withholding the correct amount to cover that amount on your W-4. Now, let's say that you would like to pay your taxes on your own. Well, that's pretty simple. All we would need to do is go back to this estimator and we can go to the income section. And instead of saying zero in withholdings, I could say whatever I want. So if I want to make $2,500 quarterly payments and I'm going to say, you know what, that's going to be $10,000 for the year, I can put in $10,000. And then when we get to the end, it's going to make sure that I'm still, look, it still says the same here. If you submit the new W-4, you're still gonna get to the $22,779 that you need to get to, but it's gonna withhold less money because look at this, expected tax withholding that we've currently have done is already $10,000. So it's going to adjust the IRS form W-4 so you can withhold that difference. And if we were to compare all this just to $150,000 as employment income, you'll pay more in taxes because of the other half of self-employment the 7.65% the that the employer side pays, and because you're self-employed, you get to pay, but you still get a little bit of flexibility here because I, I did another video and you can watch that one, but this one right here, this amount right here, this 46,468, you can actually get all of this money into a retirement plan, which I did a, a couple of days ago, so you can watch that video, but I did it on $50,000. So if you have self-employment income of $50,000, then you can put in $46,468 into your retirement plan any way that you want. If you wanted to put it into the traditional side, then you can get most of it in the traditional side. If you wanted to get it all over to the Roth side, you can put in a contribution of $46,468. You just have to know how to do it, which I walked through on another video. But that is why I wanted to kind of go through this. So you can kind of mess around with it. And if you're kind of wondering, well, what if I put it into the traditional side? Of your, of your 401, solo 401k, or if you have a traditional IRA, how much will it reduce your taxes? Well, interestingly, a lot of people don't know this, but you'll reduce your federal taxes, but you won't reduce your self-employment tax. Anything you contribute to a retirement plan, whether it's tr the traditional side or the Roth side, is still, still has self-employment taxes. So there's no getting around the self-employment taxes if you're making a contribution or taking it as income. You're still gonna pay self-employment tax, but by putting it into the traditional side, you can reduce your federal taxes, your federal income taxes, which could help you qualify for certain credits or deductions. And there are just so many of them. That is why it's so important to pay attention to your income and how it is taxed. So. Hopefully this has helped you fill out the IRS Form W-4 and get a little clarity on how taxes are withheld and to help you make better financial decisions. 
And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.